Jeff, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you, my friend? All right, man. It's very cool to have you again, man. I appreciate it. I love the shirt. Hey, I knew you would. <laughs> and, and I still love that album behind you that I mentioned last time, that Terrence Trent Darby thing. It's You left it there on purpose because you knew I was going to comment on it. <laughs> well, you're the only one that does, unfortunately. You well, know, unfortunately, not a lot of people knew of that record. By by the time yeah. he was making that record, a lot of people had pretty much written them off. And uh, as far as I was concerned, that was that was one of his best albums. I, I absolutely mm -hmm. love that vibrator record. Yep, so, I do too. Uh, yeah, it's 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 one of those things that uh, my God, what what a what an important record even for me as far as uh, the things that I listen to. When people ask me, "Hey, what are you listening to today?" That's new. It's like not much i'm listening to the old i'm listening to the stuff that really turned me on musically because mm -hmm. i really don't have time to learn and, and try to discover new music it's i'd rather just listen to what i love yeah yeah and that was a special record he was you know when he came out he they kind of uh build him as the new prince and right. uh you know that first record is great as well oh yeah uh, but i think he, I, he, I saw him as much more than that i because he, he was a bit like bruno mars he's uh he's mm -hmm. a bit of he was a throwback you know he he was hark his material was hearkening and his voice was hearkening back to the old soul days of the 60s and i heard every nuance of it and that's why i loved that that man's voice so much yeah yeah absolutely and anybody who's not familiar uh terrence trent darby's vibrator record you see it somewhere around here uh yeah go get that and listen to it for sure and, and, and before we get off the subject there's one song on that record uh that to this day i play to people i blow people's minds with with uh it's uh one of his best performances and it's it's strange because it's the one of the shortest songs he's ever done um I mean, what's the name of it's called if you go before me half the first okay. half of the song is it's him narrating like a poem and over a piece of music, a piano music. And then the singing literally is about two minutes maximum, but the voice, his notes, his everything, the passion is, it really just smoke comes out of my ears every time I hear it. Yeah, it's so cool. I got to get back. You know, I haven't listened to it for quite a while, to be honest. And uh, you know, it's, it, the whole thing is just a masterpiece for sure. I reference that album to so many people, that particular song to so many people. When I say, you want to hear something cool, check this out. <laughs> yep. yeah, no doubt. No doubt, man. Uh, we don't have a uh, video where you're just audio today. So I'm going yes, to, yeah, I'm going to lose my female audience, but that's okay. Wow. You know what? <laughs> You're, you're the only eye candy here anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only one that likes to, you know, notices the vibrator record and the only one that would ever <laughs> say that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, man. Well, let me introduce you. Uh, you know, and I have to tell you, you are probably, I think, uh, I've, I have to go through, but I've been doing this about 19 years now, and you've been with me four times uh, on the website and on the channel and, uh, you know, it, it means the world to me. Uh, you're a musical hero for me. And uh, to have you, uh, that's the most I've ever had anybody on the show. And, uh, you know, your time is so appreciated, Jeff. Thank you. You want to hear something funny? This That, that was the same thing the uh, the last one I just hung up with uh, <laughs> said to me. And it's, again, it's, a, it's unbelievable. It's, I'm starting to feel like Alec Baldwin on the Saturday Night Live. You know, how many times he's on the... Uh, <laughs> with the seven times club with steve martin how many times they've hosted the show yeah. it's it's so cool when we can revisit you know we can come back to and talk to new material after so many years and so many times with so many different releases i love it yeah yeah and and you're you're so i mean prolific is is not even a the right word uh you just you're constantly honing your craft and doing your thing and you're constantly giving your time uh and you know i there's no way to thank you for that man there really is well, you're giving me way too much credit <laughs> uh, man not, not in the least but let's do this uh jeff scott soto with me here of course jeff is one of the great voices of our time uh he has fronted ingve malmstein's rising force uh the original vocalist for that band uh and of course talisman journey for a short period of time sons of apollo uh his soto band his solo band uh so many projects and of course a big part of the trans-siberian orchestra ensemble for many years uh jeff is about to release the duets collection volume one 
on October 8th. And, you know, Jeff, the best part of that title is volume one. (laughs) That means there's probably a volume two, right? Well, I'm, you're old enough to remember the reference and only some people have actually caught on to it. I never, I never intended to, to, uh, I'm not intending to make many volumes, of course, unless there's a demand, but, but, uh, the, the title was basically a, it was a piss take on the, the Brett, the Mel Brooks movie, history of the world part two, you know, there was, <laughs> right. there was never a part one, never was going to be a part one. And even at the end of, even at the end of the movie, they're showing you scenes or things that would be in another version of a sequel of the movie <laughs> never came to pass. Nope. I added that as more of a title. But I guess in some ways it's a it's a little bit of a psychological dig that hey guys if you really like this there'll be more volumes to come, so yeah. that's that's one of the main reasons that I titled it Volume One. Of course I'd love to do more and and Lord knows I have the body of work to do more, but mm-hmm. it really was just a it was the title sounded cool and just putting out the duets collection. Yeah, oh it's yeah it's uh it's something man. I mean it is great to look back at your catalog. And your catalog is, of course, tremendous. uh, And it only touches, it only scratches the surface. So a volume two would be very welcome, that's for sure. Uh, You know what, I've I've even already thought about that, that if I've even started thinking on on other songs that I would love to redo with and certain people I'd love to sing with, but I'm I'm even furthering the idea of maybe doing a duets female only edition, you know, where I'm only singing with females redoing the song. You know, I, I, I got a little flack for that on uh on this album that there are no no girl singers on no female singers on it yeah and i said that wasn't be, that wasn't out of uh intention mm-hmm. the, the main ideal of this album was to first of all to to sell the idea of the album and the second one was to invite all my friends these are all people i have personal relationships with to sing on there with me i don't have enough female sing oh, i'm sorry and the third one is to keep it pretty much under the frontiers umbrella all the singers are if in some way shape or form involved in frontiers records so having all three of those parameters i couldn't think of more than one or two singers that would work to be on this record based on you know having all that protocol involved right right yeah well that's that is a significant idea right there uh that would yeah. uh that would really be something else uh, I would love to. And, and I've got an EPK coming out. Uh, I believe it's coming out right when the album's coming out. And I explained that, that uh, the song Calling All Girls that I, that I mm-hmm. chose to, actually Frontiers chose that one to be on the record. I'm singing, that song starts in the high heavens. My range on that, I'm singing high and only gets higher. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh my God, to sing this with the people that I know, I got to get, I probably have to get a female singer to do it. And then I'm like, oh, it's Calling All Girls. It'll be kind of, <laughs> maybe it's not, it, it, right. This is more of like our, our, our anthem, our war cry for the you know for the time for the for the eighties, and maybe right. it doesn't really sit well having a female singing "Calling All Girls." Right, right, yeah, and uh, of course you got Russell Allen. Absolutely, and what a voice! Oh my God, oh, that man. guy is just ridiculous. There's yeah. nothing that guy can sing. It is crazy, uh, you know, and all the singers here, uh, you know, and I wanted to go. I wanted to run down this 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 track list uh because it is it is significant uh what the songs you're doing um living the life you start this thing off with and it's of course a steel dragon song uh Perfect. from the rockstar soundtrack uh so many people reference that when talking about you and and so many people love that movie and love that soundtrack um and of course there's stand up um from that soundtrack with Sammy Hagar wrote the song, right? right. Um, you know, so there are so many possibilities and to revisit that was great. Did you ever consider getting a hold of Sammy for stand up? Um, I, I considered it for a second, but for starters, Sammy is not on frontiers. Mm-hmm. Secondly, Sammy released his own version of it. And I don't know that he would be interested in doing a version with me. Right. I would rather save Sammy for something else in the future instead of something that's so obvious because he co-wrote, he actually wrote the song. Yeah. I'd rather save Sammy in the future if there's a volume two or three for something that was a little more. And again, a lot of these singers that I chose for, that I cast for certain songs, 
they were there it was more than just their voices fit the actual songs the connection like for instance johnny joelli with doing warrior mm -hmm. johnny replaced me in axel rudy pan's pals band and still singing for him so he's probably sung that song warrior live more than i got to do it when i was with right. axel and so that alone that connection of johnny's one of my dear friends one of my i love his voice so much he's part of frontiers umbrella but more importantly he's part of that he's part of my history in that mold of axel rudy pell and yeah. i can go on and on and on about how certain singers had to be on certain songs there was no exception that being said i would rather think of something in the future that has a reason or reflection to sammy and and more of a I guess a double entendre reason of why he's singing that with me than just to do stand up with him. Right. Right. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, the other thing, I kind of part two of that, that was mm -hmm. part of frontiers. They, they chose that song. They wanted me to do that song. And I, I said, guys, I've, I've beaten that song to death. There's like three or four live albums or, or live DVDs included that have that song on it. I don't want now a, a studio version of that. There's so many versions of that available, even YouTube of me doing that song. Let's do Living the Life because that's the second most known from the catalog of songs that I sang on that soundtrack. Right. And it's a great choice. It's really cool. Uh, you know, and, and it's it's one of those things, like I say, the rock star soundtrack is that people want you to do that. And it's probably second only to material from marching out. <laughs> right. right? Uh, you know, when are you going to do I Am a Viking? I mean, that's the most popular question you probably get, right? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. And, um, it, you know, I'm, I'm even, I'm again, I'm, I'm thinking ahead. I'm, I'm thinking of the long term of this, if this turns into something, I would love nothing more than, than to even kind of have a relationship and, and patch things up with Ingby. And maybe we could re revisit that song, doing it together wow. someday with another wow. singer. You know, there's so many different things I could do with the ideal of the duets collection. And so, but for this particular one, Living the Life is the only song on the record that I had nothing to do with penning. I, I had nothing to do with the, the lyrics, the melodies, et cetera. And I wanted to have, I'm revisiting my past. I'm revisiting so much that I've done, but I wanted to revisit them in the sense that I was part of the creation of them. And that's why I, I chose. The, I didn't. I didn't write anything on uh, "I'm a Viking," and and I would. I would rather do a song that I actually had something to do with in recreating it. And you do. Don't let it end. And that is. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Uh, it's Thank the you know. It will be the cornerstone of the album for a lot of people uh, because I agree with you. Yeah, we've really been waiting for you to revisit "Marching Out." Um, it's so monumental. I mean, that song, that that whole record, just sits within my soul uh it, it, it's nestled there forever uh it's one of the greatest records of all time it truly I, appreciate is. It. I, I hear it so many times and it's, mm. it's it truly is a validation and testament to everything that i've done my humble beginnings as, as you know trying to carve my niche carve my stone and show people who i am and, and gain gain that respect especially from my peers it, that is such an important time for me. And you don't realize it when you're going through it. Just like now, I don't realize maybe there is going to be a poignant or importance in doing this record somewhere down the, in the future. When you're doing it, you're just doing it because it's the same thing as waking up every morning and making a cup of coffee. You do it because that's part of your routine. It's not until you're much older, like I am now, that I can reflect at something like that and go, Jesus, we were just kids. I mean, Ingbe himself was only 21. That's I was crazy when I joined them. I was 19. I turned 19 just before we recorded that song originally. So when you wow. think back to that, that's when the reflection truly kicks in. That's when you really go, holy shit, I've done a lot of cool stuff in my life. And, <laughs> and even to be a part of something that means so much to so many people, that's the ultimate validation in doing what I do for a living. Yeah. Yeah. And it really does. It means so, so, so much. Uh, it, that record is just special in every way. Uh, what made you finally revisit that record? Cause you've been staying away from that record for quite a while. What, what made you well, revisit? Unless I was asked to, unless there was a reason to go tapping into that old stuff, uh, you know, as in, this was the case of that scenario, there's not really, there's no reason to go and redo something that you've already done unless you're doing it live for the sake of doing it live for the people. I've stayed away from it because, especially singing it live, I don't think I can deliver it live the way it, it's expected of me. I don't want to be dropping the key down to two and three keys lower so I can pull it off. 
I want to I want to give it the respect and dignity that it deserves. So I leave it alone and instead of trying to redo it and people walking away going, oh, that's so sad. It used to be so good. <laughs> you know, and that's another thing, Jeff. I, the, the, the reason we love you so much is, is you're so humble and so honest and genuine. Uh, it's, it's like that. You know, that's, uh, you know, your boundaries, you know where you're at. And, uh, you know, we appreciate uh, that honesty for sure. It's funny. I, I, I'm influenced by so many people in so many walks of life. And one of the... Uh, one of the most, you know, the honest people that you, you're talking about honesty. I learned that from listening to so much Howard Stern. He's an open book. He, there's nothing he won't say or hide. You know, he speaks his mind. And I love that about him is one of the reasons I became such a fan. It's not just an act. It's not just a, a character that he's playing. He will talk about his personal experiences on so much in life, whether it's embarrassing or not. And right. to, to be honest, it really just helps it, it, it just helps people understanding who you are and what you're about than trying to create this facade that uh, of this rock star image. And, you know, I'm my shit doesn't stink and I'm the best at this. And it, it to right. me, that's just silly. It, it's so much easier just to be you. And it's gotta be freeing, you know, uh, for, yeah. for you as you know, and like with Howard, you know, he's, he's just out there. Everything is out there. So it's, a, you're a free man, you know, there's no, Absolutely. no, yeah, that's pretty great. No hidden agendas, and and for the most part, you you're everything that uh, that they see. If they see you in an interview, or they hear you talking somewhere. It's it's exactly what you are on and off the camera or on and off the stage. Yeah, yeah, we always get Jeff. That's for sure. <laughs> it's pretty great. Man. It's pretty great. Uh, tell me, uh, did you choose the song and then the singer? Did you like you know? I see Eric Martin there, and he's just phenomenal on that song. Yeah. Uh, the talisman uh, track, of course, uh, mysterious. Um, I would imagine it's different for each song, but you know, for the most part, did you say, "Hey, I want to do this track, this track, this track, and this track," and then pick singers, or you know, was it separate for each one? Kind of. Uh, the, the songs were chosen and confirmed before I I, I started adding singers to the uh, to the names, or okay. started adding the names to the titles. Um, I gave Frontiers pretty much the open carte blanche leash of choosing what they wanted to hear on this record because for for many reasons i mean i i have a long-term relationship with them and respect with them uh mm -hmm. and so but also knowing that the other thing that a lot of people don't understand and realize they're always fighting for artistic control and freedom when you work with your label they feel like they're a part of it and they're going to give you a little more uh backing on it a little more priority on it than they than they would if you just did your own thing and said hey stay away i'll turn it in when it's done you'll you'll hear it when it's done i like to involve them because by involving them they feel like they're more part of the promotion and moving process later once it's actually done and released yeah so that being said they chose the majority of the record they chose the majority of the songs i i changed a few titles here and there they said we want to do this thing based song i said i'd rather do this one or this one from rockstar i'd, I'd rather do that one but it, once the actual songs were selected and confirmed, that's when I made my master list of people that, one, fit the criteria of, and not in any particular order, but that were part of the Frontiers umbrella. Number two, my dear friends and, and people that I know and love and that I knew would say yes to doing something like this. But number three, some of my favorite singers out there today, they happen to be my friends just the same. So by wrangling this wish list of bucket list of people I wanted to sing with, it was then my job to now cast them in particular songs. And that was the most fun process because I was kind of a bit of a casting director, you know, like they do it. Like I said it earlier, they, they do it on TV and, and movies. I got to be a casting director saying, oh, that voice would be perfect for that. Oh, that voice has to be for that song because of this right. reason, that reason, that reason. Yeah. So it really was a lot of fun, the, uh, kind of like a tic-tac-toe kind of game of, or I'm sorry, match game. It was, it was really fun to put those things together in terms of, and in my head, I had to hear their voices on the songs before I asked them to do it because I needed to know deep down that it was going to work. Yeah. And I, you know, I thought about that and I'm thinking, you know, there's a couple of guys that are kind of out of their, not out of their element, I guess, but you know, genius singers, Nathan James, for one, uh, right. just a, a great singer, but maybe not like, you know, believe in me is, is, is maybe a little bit different for him. Um, how much directing or, or coaching did you do? Like, you know, or did you just let him have that song and do it in his yeah. way? Or did you Zero. say, Hey, Zero you coaching. Yeah, I zero. I, I let these guys be them. 
I did not want the, the last thing I wanted them is to do a rendition of impersonating me or, or even sticking to the script. There were, I loved when they kind of went, they went out of the box and did their own versions and did their own things and additions to the songs. Because that to me was how this, the, why and how this album would actually stand out. I pretty much stuck to script. I, I tried to do things verbatim and I asked the musicians to kind of stick to the script and, and kind of deliver verbatim because I didn't want to mess with something that a lot of people are so tied to. They're so it, it's they're already emotionally attached to. If I change that portion of it, it all of a sudden turns it into a different interpretation, kind of a, a revision of the song. And I didn't want that either. I wanted the script to pretty much follow the course as it's supposed to the way people are used to hearing the songs, but then to actually add that other element, which is the other voice that makes it different from the originals. Yeah. And it's, you know, we get, we get a new set of songs. I mean, they're, they're not the same songs, you know what I mean? Exactly. It's, it's really cool. Um, yeah. The, the cornerstone that where the album peaks for me uh, is color. My ecstasy, man. I, <laughs> it's, Oh my God. The, uh, yeah. that, baseline is insane uh is that tony dickinson from your solo band that's, that's my boy tony i played bass on most of the album but there's some songs there was no way i could pull it off <laughs> and, and so that and uh like mysterious there's certain things i i knew i had to go to tony for and and, and rest the soul of dave z were still with us he probably would have been the one i went to for those songs but uh tony is just a monster and the guy can play anything and he makes it sound so effortless but he really, truly just knocks it out of the ballpark the way it's expected to be heard. That's, but yeah, uh, yeah. Color to see. I, I love, I love, love, love this new band, Electric Mob from Brazil. Yeah. They also label mates. Renan Zonta is the singer. Mm. I just remember one day I, I happened to be like perusing my Facebook page or something, and uh, Frontiers was announcing the release of one of their new finds, a band from Brazil. Oh, I'll give it a listen. I'm like, holy shit, this is the guy's voice. That's and what I did. There, I yeah. befriended him, and from there, he when I asked him to do this, it was beyond <clears throat> beyond excitement for him because he admitted that I was such a big influence to him growing up. And again, it's uh, it it really means more to me to have people that want to do this, that feel honored to do this, because I'm just as honored to have them on there. Yeah, it, it's so cool. You you've birthed guys like that. You know what I mean? That's it's tremendous uh, what you've done, but. Um, the, he's he's incredible i did the same thing when i on electric mob hit my inbox i was like okay let me check it out and <laughs> wow um yeah. but that's the song uh if you don't listen to anything else listen to this song because it's worth the price of admission it's unbelievable um the, the whole thing is incredible um the guitar solo and the breakdown jam there crazy um, do you have a favorite here? One that's like a fond memory for you. One that had to be on here. I it's tied for first place. Don't let it end and coming home. And the main reason is the main reason for don't let it end is because it, it truly harkens the early stages, the beginning of my life and my career. And to revisit that when I was such a young uh, up and coming singer myself, now to revisit it after I've done all that I've done with also now a new young up and coming singer who I absolutely love his voice and I, I respect Dino so much in what he's doing and carving his own niche. It's kind of like I not only went back to my own history, but I, I kind of added the element of somebody else starting his own career and adding that to the element of the beginning of my career. So that in itself just means so much to me. And then, of course, coming home to be able to sing with Dean, I, I I got to do a year of singing and touring with Dean as a, a member of Journey. And it was such a joy to hear him sing every night. And now he's coming to terms with being an actual singer now. I couldn't yeah. think of any other singer to do that song with me other than Steve Perry himself. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that is such a cool thing because he played drums on that original Soul Circus uh, track, right? Right. Yeah. So, you know, you but yeah, kinda... to have him on there as a singer and so cool. And, uh, and not the drummer. It's it, it was just a, another pivotal portion of my career and and doing something that I love so much with that as far as that song. That's so cool, so cool. Uh, you know, and I want to respect your time. I know you got a whole day of interviews here. Um, last time I talked to you, and I know this is kind of the elephant in the room. And please, you know, if you don't want to say anything about it, please just we'll move on. Um, last time I talked to you, you were with David. 
uh, Ellison, um, and you had an album done with him. It, will we see that? Is that going to come out? I'm hoping it will at some point. I've I've given David, and as many people have, the space and the time to kind of deal with his own things, and uh, it, we we were full on getting that thing uh, ready to to bounce and to to, to drop, etc. And obviously, things were put on hold for that reason. Uh, and it's it's just better for things to just kind of go away and and kind of calm down because sure. it, we just we don't need the kind of press that comes with it, especially the comments and the, the internet cowboys out there. Yeah, let it go away. Let it just kind of slip under the rug, and I'm sure that stuff is going to resurface. So the idea of it will resurface and get us out there. That's great, and you know, and the, it's like you know, mom. You don't want to see mom and dad fight, and I say that all the time. But you know, that's uh, it's great to see that you still have a relationship with David, and and uh, that we might see that. Um, uh, absolutely, I know I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. What's, what's, it, 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 absolutely, we will. I'm sure we'll revisit it when the time is right. Awesome. Uh, what's it look like in Sons of Apollo land? Are we gonna get a record, a tour? Uh, what's going on there? I think the first dialogue will happen with, as far as that's concerned, once we do the four dates that we have booked in January, we haven't discussed it. We haven't had any band meetings or any, uh, any powwow, so to speak, on what's in the future for the band at the moment. And a lot of it is reflective of these dates that we're going to do because everybody is not only busy doing the stuff that they've already been doing, they're now, they're going to be using 2022 as kind of a making up for all the stuff that we were grounded and couldn't do. So right. timing is going to be the first thing and trying to find schedules and openings and windows for everybody to get together. But the main thing is the, the when and where and the how and the who and all that stuff. So I think that dialogue will happen once we're all together again, once we reignite that energy and that the, the feeling of playing together again live. And I think from that excitement, I'm sure that's where we're going to say, guys, we need to discuss and decide what we're going to be doing now. Yeah, that's great, man. I mean, all of this stuff, uh, you know, and you're not 19 anymore. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you see an end? You know, I, I hate to ask that question, but I, you yeah. know, it's I like, honestly don't, I, I don't want to see an end because I, just the fact that I made it almost four decades with people wanting to hear me still and still interested in what I'm doing. And I'm still finding ways and outlets that I can continue doing what I'm doing. That in itself is an achievement if I can continue doing exactly what I am and have been and, and get that acceptance, as long as I can vocally pull it off, as long as I can, uh, as long as I feel it's challenging and fun for me, I really don't see an end for me. I, I, the only end that would come is if I just can't do it anymore. And you do get to a point in your life where it's, it's too different. It's too outside of what people remember you from. And I don't want to be one of those I, I don't want to put releases out there where people go, oh, God, he used to be so good. I said this earlier. I, I want them to remember me and know me for everything that I've done. But realistically and humanely continue doing it where it still sounds good, where it still sounds relative to what I've already done. Yeah, well, it sounds incredible. Uh, don't let it end, Jeff. We love you, man. Right uh, on, brother. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, man. Uh, it's it's so great. The Duets Collection, Volume 1 comes out this friday and check it out uh jeff until the next time man i love you stay safe uh it's it's just incredible what you're doing and uh you know you're you're uh, something special to this world thank you scott i can't thank you enough for those kind words and uh we'll be speaking soon i'm sure <laughs> yes absolutely absolutely be well all right, my brother. Friend. All right. All right bye-bye